Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss content element and in integrated reporting. It's very important to look at what we did earlier and how we arrived to this point. In the prior sessions, we looked at integrated reporting and integrated thinking. And as a result, we generated or the byproduct of integrated thinking of integrated reporting is the integrated report itself. Then we discussed value creation. We discussed the six capital. We discussed value creation process. We looked at the guideline, the principles in creating a report. Remember, integrated reporting and integrated thinking result in integrated report. Now, in the prior session, we looked at principles, guiding principles and helping us prepare this report. In this session, we are more specific. We are going to we will be looking at the content elements that we need to have in this integrated report i r so each integrated report should contain nine content element think of it as a content in a book just nine things that they have to discuss which are outlined in the integrated reporting framework so there are they, there's a framework and those nine items are listed there so instead of simply ticking off requirements, organizations should focus on answering key questions that guide the report content. So the integrated reporting framework, what they say is this. So when the company prepared their report, they don't want you to have boxes where you, yes, I have this, I check this, I check this, I check this. They don't want you to be what we called an accounting, ticking off the box. What they want you to do is answer actual questions in order to address the content of the report. So these elements are interconnected and there's a nine of them and the information provided should be flow logically. Obviously we are going to over each element separately. We are going to explain what that element is and look at an example. But think of the content are more specific than the guidelines. Why? Because they answer a particular question. And once a company answer those nine questions, they will have, they will give a good overview about the company. Now, what does what are those nine content elements are? This is what we'll discuss in this session. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Hello everyone. Are you struggling with your CMA exam preparation? Do you feel that your review course is moving too fast, too brief, or not covering topics in depth? Well, if that's the case, at Farhat Lectures, we can help you. We build your confidence through in-depth explanation, not memorization or reading the slides. What we will do is we provide baby steps approach to break down complex topic so you can truly learn, understand the material. How do we do so? We offer video lectures, we offer practice MCQs, we offer true-false questions. We offer exercises. We offer the notes. Understanding the material is the first step in passing the exam. Once you understand the material, you have gained the confidence to pass, and you can pass with Farhat Lectures. What can you do now? Start your free trial. You have a two-day free trial. Take a look at it. Give us a chance. Your risk is zero. You like it, you keep it. You don't like, you cancel. Give us a chance. We can help you pass the CMA exam. The first one, the first of the nine is organization overview and external environment. And each one will have a question for the company to address. For example, question one, what does the organization do and under what circumstances does it operate? I would, I would think that each company will have a different answer, but you have to outline your answers there. So this element or this content element focuses on the market. Tell me about your market in which you operate, your mission, your vision. What is your competitive advantage? What's your competitive landscape? And tell me about the external factor that influence your business. Here, the organization also will discuss stakeholders need and how it responds to those changes in the external environment. So simply put, tell me about your company. What do you do? What's your mission? What's your vision? What's your market? For example, a tech company might describe its mission to innovate in its competitive environment in the fast-paced industry along an analysis of regulatory changes that might affect its future operation. This is specific to this tech company. If you're in the food industry, your 
mission, vision, competitive landscape will be different. If you're in the education, it will be totally different. This is basically an overview about the company. Two is your governance. How does the organization governance structure support its ability to create value? Now, don't tell me about your governance. Tell me about how your board of directors, your top management support the ability to create value in the short, medium, and long term. This elements explain how the organization is governed. What's its leadership structure? For example, do we have a CEO, CFO, board of directors? It's the diversity of the people inside, decision-making process. How do they make the decisions, their values and ethics? And some of this information could be in the vision and the mission of the company. Again, all these items are interrelated, but they want to make sure you did not keep anything out. Now, you can talk about your governance in question one, but rather than discussing your governance in question one, you have a specific question about this. It should also highlight how executives are compensated along with their long-term value creation. Okay, I'm giving you money. You got to explain why I'm paying millions and millions for a CEO. So for example, a retail company might explain how its board of di director is diverse and committed to sustainability and how executive bonuses are tied to long-term financial performance and environmental goal. This is the company's chance to talk about their top management and how does top management create value in the short, medium, and long term, connecting their compensation, their salaries, their bonuses to that. Also, you want to answer a question about the business model, part of your content. What is the organization business model? Very similar to your, not similar, but basically if you miss something from your market, vision, mission, competitive advantage, this is your chance to tell me about how your organization create value, including key stakeholders, material dependency, and the resource required. A little bit more specific. Show me your business model. This element is often presented in a narrative, basically the same thing as in question one, similar, tell me about your company or a diagram. They may show you a diagram, how the company operates and create value. This is basically showing me your business model. If we look at an example, for example, a manufacturing company might show a diagram of its supply chain explaining how raw material are sourced, product are made, and the value is delivered to the customer along with the roles of suppliers and the customers in the business model. So they might show you a diagram, a narrative, they may write it out, a narrative. Just tell me what's your business model. Here, if you're becoming more specific, it's your business model. Now, you got to be careful. You can't devolve too much information in these things because you could lose. This is one of the disadvantages because you could lose your competitive edge. Another thing you want to include is our risks and opportunities. What are risks and opportunities? What is risk and opportunities affect the organization ability to create value and how it's managing them. Simply put, what are your risks? What are your opportunities? And specifically for your risk, how are you managing your risk? This elements identify the risk and opportunities that could impact the organization over short, medium, and long term. Each company will have different risks. These could be internal risk, external risk, or both. For example, external risk could be competitive advantage. How do we maintain our competitive advantage? And they should include an assessment of materiality and how the organization addressing these factors. So list me the risk and tell me how you're addressing these factors. For example, an institution might highlight the risk of cybersecurity threat and the opportunities for growth in the digital banking. So there's an opportunity. We want to grow in digital banking, but the risk is cybersecurity. Here they can explain how investing in IT infrastructure to mitigate these risks is good while leveraging the opportunity. So, okay, we have a risk, we have an opportunity. How are we mitigating the risk? We're going to invest in our IT infrastructure, make sure it is secure. Strategy and resource allocation. You want to answer a question about that. Where does, the, where does the organization wants to go and how does it plan to get there? Again, Tell me more about the company. This element describes the organization's strategic objective and how resources are allocated to achieve them. Again, there might be some something similar to question one and question three. It also explains how progress is measured. How am I measuring my progress? Also, how am I allocating my resources to, to where? Is it to human capital? Is it to manufactured capital? Is it to intellectual capital? As I mentioned, this is closely linked to the business model and the external environment. Just in case you did not emphasize 
on your strategy and one and three this is your opportunity to talk about your strategy so for example a pharmaceutical company might discuss its strategy to expand into new market by investing in R&D this is a strategy and allocating resources toward acquiring smaller biotech firm to, to accelerate innovation so what you do is you want to gain intellectual capital how are you doing so R&D and buying smaller biotech firms performance to what extent has the organization achieved its strategic objective and what are its outcome in terms of impacts on the capital? You have to answer that, that question. This elements report on the organization performance, both quantitative and qualitative, and connect past performance to future goals. So tell me, how are, how are you measuring those impacts? Tell me, measure it, show me. It highlights the organization activities that had affect various capital, such as financial capital, social capital, and natural capital, quantitatively and qualitatively, in numbers and in descriptive, quantitative and qualitative. For example, a renewable energy company might report on how its financial performance has improved along its positive impact on natural capital by increasing its renewable energy production and reducing emission. So how are you measuring? How are you measuring this? You can show me uh, by increasing renewable energy and reducing emission, my financial performance went up. This is measuring your performance. Tell me a little bit more about your outlook now, about the future. What challenges and uncertainties is the organization likely to encounter in pursuing its strategy? Because you're going to talk about your strategy. And what are the implications for its business model for future performance? You told me about your business model. Now tell me a little bit more about how is that going to be affected in the future. So this element discusses future challenges uncertainties because the future is uncertain and the organization ability to respond and here they're going to touch upon risks because when you discuss risk you discuss the future it should include expectations potential changes and their implication for the business notice all these questions as i told you at the beginning they're interrelated and the reason is to give a complete comprehensive picture about your company. For example, a car manufacturers might analyze the uncertainty surrounding future regulatory changes on emission standards and explain how it plans to innovate its electric vehicle pro increase or innovate its electric vehicle production to meet future regulation and consumer demand. For example, my strategy is to go from the gas engine to electric vehicle. Outline it. Tell me, what are the challenges? What are the uncertainties? What resources are you you're going to be allocating to that? This is the outlook. Basis, for preparation, basis of preparation and presentation. How does the organization determine what matter to include in the integrated report? And how is, how is this information presented? Again, here we talk about materiality. Like, what's important? What's important? And that's one of the most the, the toughest thing like what's what's material what to include what not to include this elements explain the organization process for deciding what information is material and should be included in the report and again you have to be careful in disclosing too much information it covers how materiality is determined you remember we talked about materiality the involvement of stakeholders and how the organization decides which issues to prioritize. So what am I presenting? Why am, why am I presenting this information? For example, a tech startup might explain how it gathers input from key stakeholders such as customers and investors to determine which business issues are the most critical and should be prior prioritized in its integrated report. So this is how they determine this. Talk to my customers, talk to my stakeholders. What's important for them becomes important in that report. This is how I do that. You want to look also not outlook, future outlook. What challenges and uncertainties might the organizations face in implementing its strategy and how it will respond? Even more futuristic, the organization should provide an analysis of potential risk and opportunities that could impact the company's long-term goals. Again, we talked about outlook, but this include changes in external environment, market trend, internal challenges, as well as the company's plan to respond effectively. Yes, they are all interrelated. For example, a food manufacturer might discuss the impact of global supply chain disruption 
and rising commodity prices, explaining how it plans to diversify its supply chain and invest in local sourcing to mitigate these risks. And this becomes important, especially after COVID, because some companies, they were relying on suppliers and there was a global supply chain disruption. So tell me a little bit more about how are you planning to deal with this and respond to it. So what are the benefits of this content element? Well, obviously, this is to guide the organization in structuring the report in order to provide a comprehensive, clear, forward-looking overview of how they create value addressing both internal and external factor. That's the benefit. So by answering these questions, organization ensure that their report are adaptable to various business contexts and stakeholders need. Once again, each report is different because each company is different. Each company will have a different outlook, different risks, different business model, different opportunities, different challenges. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. A company is reporting on how its governance structure contribute to the value creation. Which of the following would best demonstrate this? So governance structure is their top management board of directors. Detailing the company's product line. Well, that might be in the content report, but that's not governance structure. Company product is basically the company. When we talk about the company's product, it's separate than when we're talking about the governance structure. So A is definitely out because it doesn't touch upon that. B, describing how the board of directors, this is good because this is part of governance, board of directors, align remuneration with long-term strategic goals. So how describe how the board of directors align compensation with long-term strategic goals. Yes, this could be a good answer because it talks about the go board of director, which is part of our governance structure and how it's linking the compensation with long-term strategic goals. So we'll keep B, listing the salaries of all executives. Well, all what you're doing here is listing the salaries, but you are not showing me how it's, cre it's creating value. So between B and C, I will definitely take out C. C will be part of B. I mean, you, top executives, you might show their salaries, but show, showing how they are is good, like connecting the two. D, providing an overview of the organization tax payment over the past year. Um, that's financial information. It could show in the income statement, but that doesn't that doesn't deal with governance structure. Governance structure deals, deals with top management. How does top management run the company? And in this situation, not only how they run the company, how they align compensation with the long-term strategic goal. How do they compensate top executives and linking those compensation, for example, giving them stock options to to motivate them. I would say the answer is B. And what should you do now? You should go to Farhat Lectures if you're studying for your CMA exam. Look at additional MCQs on farhatlectures.com or whatever test you are studying for professional certification. Invest in yourself. Good luck. Farhat is always here to help.